Deeds are legal documents that relate to and record specific rights to an asset or property. The asset can be land, such as this land conveyed for use of a school, or it can be a right or privilege, such as a right of way across somebody else's land. Deeds can be extremely useful when researching local history. This deed, for example, is the only reference we have to a meeting house in Oakley at a particular time, telling us more about nonconformity in the village. They can also be useful for family history. This deed, for example, tells us about the Peacock family and which children of Edward Peacock were alive in 1833 when the property passed to them. So if you have access to deeds for your research, they can be very, very useful. But people do shy away from using deeds. They can be in Latin, which can be a problem if you don't understand the language. Even if they're in English, the script can be difficult to read and difficult to interpret. They can be folded and creased and have seals hanging from the bottom. They can be very large and very tricky to handle. Mostly they are going to be made out of animal skin, parchment, and they look going to have been folded, which makes them very springy. And when you do get them undone, they don't start at the page that's in front of you, but from the page at the back, and then work forward. They can be full of legal jargon and repetition. The good news is there are things that can help. Deeds are written to a certain formula. Depending on the type of deed, they will follow a certain pattern of language. And the scribe may have picked out words in larger letters to help you work your way through. We've seen here a deed of the early 17th century and this one of the mid-19th century. There are books that can help you too. And there are online sources, such as this website. If the deeds you are using are in a local archive service, the archive service catalogue should help. It should pick out the most important parts of the document and put them in a simplified way so that you can pick your way through the document and what it's telling you more easily. So what's so good about using deeds? They mention people and places and the relationships between them. They record change. A nice bundle of title deeds for a property can reveal the story of the property, its owners and occupiers, and also what's going on next door as the land a deed is about is usually described in terms of the properties that surround it. Let's look at an example. This bundle of title deeds recently arrived at Bedfordshire Archives. They relate to cottages and premises in Clapham, Bedfordshire. The first deed dates from 1822 but because it recites an earlier transaction, it takes the beginning of the story back to 1813, when the Earl of Ashburnham sold off some of his property in Bedfordshire. Part of this property was purchased by John Skinner, who, this deed tells us, was a farmer who used to live in Wildon and now lives in Clapham. John is selling some of the property he bought to another farmer, Edward Peacock. As well as telling us how much Edward is paying and how big the land is, we find out who used to occupy the property and who lives there in 1822. That John has converted the two cottages on the land into one dwelling house and we learn about the land on either side of John's property. We also learn that the property was mortgaged so we discover something about John's financial affairs too. 
The second deed in the bundle takes the story to 1837. Edward has died and his executors are now selling the property to Mrs Lettice Hawkins. The document reveals that Lettice is in fact Edward Peacock's daughter, who is buying the property from her father's estate with the consent of her four brothers. Not only are all her brothers named, but we find out their occupations and where they live. And we also find out when Edward died. The next document carries us forward another 11 years. Now Lettice has died and the property is being sold to John Campion. But here we find that rather than being one dwelling house and a piece of land, we have the original house with a new bakehouse and a newly erected terrace of four cottages. This is a good example of how deeds can help to show when a building was first built. The final document is John Campion's will, which is granted probate only a few months after the purchase of the cottages in Clapham. John first leaves all his property to his wife for her life and then divides it between his five daughters. The Clapham property is divided between four of his daughters. Here the deeds end because from this point the cottages descend through the family without the need for further legal deed. But using censuses, records of birth, marriages and death and finally land tax records easily brings the story of three of the row of four cottages through the next 100 years down to the great-great-great-grandson of John Campion. As with all sources, deeds cannot be used on their own. Different sources complement each other and fill in gaps. Because most deeds describe property in words, maps can be particularly helpful. Here we see the property on the tithe map of 1839, in 1884 after the terrace had been built, and finally in 1925 when the cottages were assessed for tax. It's important to know that deeds only exist where there was a transaction to be recorded, and they may not survive or be accessible. But if you do find some, do take the time to get to grips with what they say, and enjoy the stories that they reveal.